G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. It's time to continue looking at how we learn to play Twilight. So in the previous video, I talked about activating and moving figures around. In this video, I was going to talk about the combat phase. There's only three phases in each turn. There's um, the activation phase, there's a combat phase, and then there's the end turn or the end of the turn. And then you begin a new turn and you keep on playing that over and over and over until you've achieved the scenario uh, win conditions or until the game comes to an end. So the first phase is fairly straightforward. I activate and move figures around the table depending on which tokens come out of the bag. So again, just quickly recapping, this token comes out, this guy moves, another token comes out, this guy moves, another token comes out, this guy moves, etc., etc. And we go back and forward until combat tokens come out. And as combat tokens come out, there'll be two of them in the bag. Once both of those tokens have come out, we check for victory conditions in the end phase of the game, or the end phase of the turn. We check for victory conditions, and then all the tokens go back in the bag and we play another round. Now, like I said, I was going to go through the combat mechanics, but I think it's first important just to stop here and talk a little bit about the abilities that each of the characters have. So there's six different types of abilities a character can have in the game. They're leadership abilities, activation abilities, combat abilities, ranged abilities, traits, and special. Now traits are always active, so if a character has a trait, it will always be active for him. There's no need for us to use that at any specific you know, phase during the game, so we'll forget about that for the moment. We'll forget about specials for the moment as well, because specials are normally used outside of sequence. So I might have a character that has a special ability that allows him to do something during your turn. So we'll forget about that for the moment. So let's come back and have a look at the first one, leadership. Leadership is used during the activation phase when you are moving characters around. So I didn't go through this in the previous video. Actually, I did, I touched on it a little bit. So um, let's say, for example, this, uh, this character here, the Genta Handler, he has a leadership ability called Beast Handler. Beast Handler allows him to activate two other Grishak, uh, or two other beasts, and both of these Grishak here are considered beasts. So when he activates, he can use that leadership ability during his activation to also activate these two Grishak, as long as they're within six inches of him. I explained this in the previous video, and they get to move. So leadership abilities are used during a model's activation, if they have a leadership ability. Activation abilities are also used during a model's activation. So for example, this model also has the leap ability. It's an activation ability. So when he moves, so for example, in the previous example, I went through this exactly in the previous video actually, he moves, uh, he'll activate, let's find a black token for him. Where are we? Black token. It's their turn, he activates, he'll use his, use his leadership ability to activate the two Grishak. They'll move up here, he'll then move up here, he then gets to use any activation abilities that he has, in which case he has leap, he'll use that leap ability to jump, you know, four inches, his leap is leap four, so he can move an additional four inches or leap over things. He could leap over intervening models or terrain or something like that, it's kind of like a jump really. Um, it's a leap, it's a leap. Um, so he can leap four inches. So activation abilities and leadership abilities are used during the movement part of the game, of the activation part, where you're activating and moving models around. There's all different types of activation abilities. Um, I might throw a couple of them up here on the screen as we go through, just for reference. So they're the first two, leadership and activation. The, uh, I'll skip combat and I'll drop all the way down to ranged for the moment because ranged is also used during a model's movement. I don't have anything here on the table at the moment that has any ranged abilities, but let's just say, for example, this, this uh, little Aurel Knight here. Let's say, for example, his little spear here was a ranged weapon. He had some ability on his card here that allowed him to throw that weapon, some sort of ranged weapon or something like that. I really should have organized a character that had the ability or a ranged ability. So instead of him moving when he is activated, so for example, the, the yellow ones, out comes a yellow token, he'll activate. Instead of moving, he'll use a ranged ability. And his ranged ability, for example, might allow him to throw that spear eight inches or something like that. So the ranged abilities are used in replacement of you moving around the field. 
They are basically replacing movement and allowing you to use a ranged weapon. Um, so leadership, activation, and ranged abilities are all used when you're moving and positioning figures around the table. Combat abilities are used specifically during the combat phase. Now, I might just preface this and come back a little bit. Um, I, I do, here we go, we've got one here on the table, the Grishak. The Grishak have an activation ability called Charge. So that ability, in their turn, it allows them to activate this unit. Let's say I drew this out of the bag. Activate the Grishak. He will move into contact with this little um, uh, Graku here and use his charge ability, which is used during his activation, to immediately attack that model. Only those abilities, activation abilities, that allow you to you know, engage in combat um, that are activation abilities allow you to you know, fight a combat out of sequence. I hope this is kind of making sense. I've got a feeling I'm making it a little bit more complicated than it probably needs to be. But we'll see, you know, we'll come back when I edit this and find out, you know, what exactly I'm saying, if it makes sense. Um, so some characters will have activation abilities that allow them to move further, jump around, do extra things. And some will have activation abilities that allow them to immediately attack an opponent. Let's quickly set something up here on the table. So let's just say, you know, we've got... Uh, these these guys fighting and these guys fighting this is not a wonderful scenario here for the poor um, forces of Arel here they are going to be demolished by what's here on the table but let's say this is where we are the game's being played you know there's some you know the divine who went first then the Arel knights and then an ability then a uh, combat token came out on the board so now we move into a combat phase during this combat phase, the previous player who had the initiative or who activated uh, last, in this case it was the Aurel, they get to choose which combats are being fought. I might choose in this case, you know, this one I'm outnumbering these guys, I might fight this combat first. Once that combat is resolved, I might say, okay, well obviously I've only got one of the choice, we'll do this combat here. During this phase of the game, any characters that have combat abilities can use those abilities during this combat phase. So some of them, for example, as you can see here on the table, I've got all their cards here. Um, the little Grakus here have Pack Hunter. That's a combat ability. Um, the Aurel Knight also has Pack Hunter. He has combat trained as well. The little Grishak models here, they have Savage. They also have Pack Hunter. Algenta Handler has Ferocity, he also has Pack Hunter. So when we look at combat shortly, we'll go through the process of you know, allocating and you know, determining hits, and then we'll go through the sequence of you know, using special abilities. So before we jumped into that part, you know, how do we do combat, it's a wonderful mechanic. You, know, you would have seen in the you know, original video you know, what we need to play. We don't need dice for combat. We actually, we need a, a handful of D6 for tough saves. Um, but, you know, assigning or, or, or allocating whether I'm going to uh, attack offensively or play defensively are all done with those little stones that we saw beforehand. Um, so I'm hoping this has made sense. I wanted to quickly just cover this bit of the game first because I didn't look at it before. You know, this is uh, kind of a key part to understanding how the game plays is the abilities that your characters have and when you can use them during the game. So I'll quickly recap. So leadership activation, ranged, um, and uh, uh, what am I missing? There's leadership, activation, combats, ranged, traits, and specials. We're ignoring specials for the moment and we're ignoring traits, so we've got the four left. Leadership, uh, uh, activation, and ranged are all used during the movement part of the game. When you activate a model and move it, you can use any three of those abilities. Combat abilities can only be used when a combat stone comes out of the bag and you're actively engaged in a combat. So I wanted to quickly cover those before I jump into combat. Um, because when I talk about combat shortly, there are abilities that cost stamina points to use. And I don't think I've covered stamina points either, um, but we'll have a look at those during combat. 
Some activation abilities cost stamina. Um, some uh, leadership abilities might cost stamina. Um, but uh, you know, we'll look at that when we get into combat. I think I've dribbled on enough about these abilities. But um, hopefully, I you know, I've explained it as you know clearly. I'm not sure if I have. But characters can have one of, or many of, six different types of abilities. And those abilities are either used during the activation phase of the game or the combat part of the game. Um, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, let's have a look at how some combat works in the next video. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you've got questions, please post them below. If you're confused, please post them below. And uh, you know I'll do my best to answer, and hopefully some of the Twilight guys will jump on and answer if I'm unable to. I'm not sure if I've made this any clearer or more confusing. <laughs> I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.